All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this video here. Everyone says hi. Studio audience, say hi to the YouTube and to Twitch, VODs, and everything. Any place else this video gets saved. Uh, what I what I want to talk about today, and I'm going to set my little Pomo timer so I make sure that I know it under time, uh, is, I mean, it's a Friday night. We got our beverages. It's too bad I don't have a mug. I should have like a big old, you know, like, <laughs> suitable for conan it is late night and somebody mentioned conan conan like is the best late night too he's pretty good so but why on earth would yeah i do have many shines by the way but why on earth would we actually do a video on friday night on a weekend about conan the docker container and I just, I just want to, sh I've been talking all week about different things that are, that are cool with containers because I've uh, somehow containers skipped me over. The, the, here's, I figured out the problem. So 2013, I know you don't want to hear the story, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So in 20, 2013 is when Docker got really big. It's when it came out and everything. And me, I was starting my own business. So I was not in the enterprise anymore. I'd left IBM and I was making, I wasn't really interested in containers because I was running my own infrastructure. turns out I probably should have been paying attention um, all that time. And so I've had to do a lot of like makeup and learn, learn, you know, Docker for God's sake. And many, have to, they will snicker at that because I haven't known that from, but I, I cannot believe how awesome it is. And there is no better way to start than with Conan. So here's the problem that containers solve. What, how many of you out there, by raise of hands, probably not many have done any C compilation before. You know, like you go, you go into the thing, you run autogen, uh, shell autogen, you get your configure, then you run configure, then you run make install, you get the right parameters, make sure your LD library paths are all correct, and you like compile your own thing. So if you've done Gen 2, you know about this, you've done LFS, you know about this. If, you, if you've done any customization to any C code or any, you know, Linuxy kind of things, and you know about this experience, and you know how annoying it is when you don't have the right libraries. And so this is really annoying, particularly if you have a nice pretty OS like Pop OS that I use right now or or any, you know, even basic Ubuntu or Mint or something like that. And a lot of people will use this as a justification to use Arch. Conan destroys Arch, <laughs> totally obliterates Arch. People who use Arch at this point are just proving to me how little they know about IT in general. And I'm not, I'm, we're not going to, we're not going to slam on Arch. The AUR is a great idea and everything, but it's a well, I cannot, I cannot think of a single reason that I would ever need or want to use Arch now because it's containers. Let me give you a reason. So the one reason that I had talked to myself maybe into using Arch was, Hey, you know what? Um, hey, I fluffy gave her, we're talking about Conan the container. So like one of the reasons, one of the reasons that people might tell you to use Arch is like, well, it has all the libraries, it has the AUR, it has the most recent stuff and everything. You know what else has all of that? Docker containers. <laughs> Let me give you a show. So, so like if I if I wanted to see that's cool, hang tight. So if if you want to make a container, and I mean if you want to compile something, so in this case I want to make borderless tmux. So what does that mean? That means that I can split the string. And I can have over here, I have transparency and I don't have a border. Okay. So, you know, I can have, I can have fish over here and over here I can have T matrix and you get, you know, you get all that goodness like right next to each other, or you can have the train running into the ocean, you know, whatever you want. So now I've got stuff in separate windows and I don't have a problem because, because why? Because we've got. Uh, borderless tmux well and by the way this is a custom version of ascii aquarium it has transparency in the background it's the only one in the world you can go get it in my gitlab i need to move it over to github but the point is i want borderless tmux every time i wanted borderless tmux before i would have to you know make sure all i had all the libraries particularly lib event and, and curses and then i'd have to go get the source code for tmux and i'd have to you know put that source code on the system and get pull it and then i have to go in there and make my changes and then i would have to compile it all and hope it worked and then i would take the binary and put the binary you know and save it off and everything well i'm about to do all of that right now before your eyes 
So, and then I'm going to tell you how this works. All right. So what you do, it's all, it's, uh, let, me, let me show you the script really fast so you can kind of get a sense of what it's doing. But I have now got an installed tmux script that starts out, uh, yeah, containers to the rescue, borderless tmux. This tmux, the tmux, the tmux binary and the bin of this stuff files repo will work in most cases. So I have a, I save the binary off. But this is really all you have to do to make border windows borderless work. And you just have to change, excuse me, it's a beverage, uh, screen redraw. You just have to change this to blanks, right? Not a big change. Uh, so, so we'll talk about that in a bit. So then which, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what Linux you're using, by the way. Uh, so with the, with the following code, uh, what does that say? Uh, following code will do, will, uh, let's see, we'll make and install it for you if you have Docker installed, if you have Docker installed. All right. So, and so here's what the code does. First of all, it detects whether you have Docker and, uh, then you go down and you said enable static but we're not going to do enable static that causes a problem. So I had to take it out. Uh, you make a temporary directory and CD into it. Uh, I'm using pop OS. Yeah. Uh, if you actually want more info, you can go fact it, go look, read the other stuff. If you care, it doesn't really matter though. We're talking about containers right now and I have 18 minutes left, so I got to hurry. So, so then we do this get clone. So we, we go into the temp directory and then we clone tmux. We CD into tmux. And, and then what? Then we do Docker run. We don't even have to go to the container. We can just run a shell script straight from the container and download it in one step. Yeah. So this at runs as root is if the, the in my case the container is already on the system. So I should probably actually let's it'll be more impressive if we get rid of it. So let's do, <laughs> let's get rid of the container. So let's do uh, delete. Uh, the uh, D image, uh, I'm going to try to image delete Docker image, uh, images. Let's see here. So let's get of this. Get, let's get rid of the image. It'll probably tell me that I can't, uh, uh, remove image. I wasn't planning this part. So if it doesn't work the first time, that's fine. Oops, wrong thing. Damn it. Uh, there we go. Uh, seven weeks ago. Okay. So RM image Kona is going to say, it's going to say, I can't watch what is yes, it is. I kind of want to get, uh, what is it guys? What is the command? I forgot it. I don't know Docker very well. I told you I'm learning it. Docker, uh, is it prune all system? Uh, Docker RMI. Thanks, JS Barrett. Uh, is that going to, it's going to, it's not going to do it though, right? Docker RMI. It's going it's to say it's in use. I have a feeling. Yeah. But I, I think we need to do a prune everything. What is it? There's a Docker system. Nobody don't no People don't normally do system prune. Right. Doesn't that get everything down? Uh, dangling, uh, uh I think we want to stop all the containers, right? I think all the containers are stopped. So, all right. So let's do Docker images and then, uh, system prune. Let's do images prune. Uh, I thought it was image prune. Let's just do RMI. I don't have much time. I'm running out of time. It does not, it's going to be fine though. Uh, we can get rid of this one out because that's the one that's getting used. All right, so there we go. And th the reason I'm doing that is I wanted you to get Docker, a Docker speed run. I wanted you to get like all of that stuff down. Um, so yeah, DF should have, do, 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 whoops, DF. All right, so I've gotten rid of most everything and the images, I think the images are gone. But, all right, so that's not the point. The point is, is I wanted to show you how this runs. And 
uh, to tell you the truth, I don't, it's not going to take more than five or 10 minutes to show you because it's all scripted now. So I tweaked the script every time I iterated over it and made sure I got all the things I needed. So all we're going to do is it's as if we had a brand new, uh, machine, the Conan IO GCC, uh, container, which gets downloaded from Docker hub is, uh, a, a basic Ubuntu server, I think with bash on there and apt. So they have other ones that have less even than that, but this, and it has the really important thing is it has all this stuff on it to do building. In fact, I think it has build essential on it already, but to take, to be safe, I went ahead and put it there. And so these are the steps I would normally have to do to build this. And I had these steps sort of written down uh, so I could go through it. So we would first of all, update our repo uh, on the system. Then we would go get install and answer yes to everything. Get lib event. This is the one you really need. Uh, build essential. And then bison, is to, you just have to get yak. And then it CDs into this slash tmux directory, uh, which it has. And from here, this neat thing here, so this PWD is the temporary directory that was created up here. So this temporary directory was made for us. And this colon Z says, tell SC Linux to shut up. We just want to copy the thing. We don't care. So that mounts this. I could probably have done that with just a colon without the PWD. But that means that now that my running container, which is an, um, a Linux machine, essentially, uh, is sharing a, a directory it's called slash tmux with the temporary location up here, which it'll tell you about. And, and then the Perl dash PIE, Perl Pi, this just does a replacement. I could do it with set as well, the same thing. But what this does is it replaces the occurrence of these of these things. Um, you could also create a container that has bison. Yeah, I could have done that too. I could have done a Docker file and done that whole thing that way. So this is this is the first way I came at it. In fact, I'm seriously thinking about converting this whole thing into a Docker file and putting it into its own repo. But mostly it's because I don't know Docker files very well yet. So then I did build essential and then bison to go pull that stuff down. Uh, and then this is the, the real work here. This is modifying the code. Could have done it with said, could have done it with ed, could have done it in a million different ways. But this just changes this one line. That's the thing that makes it borderless. And then we do the normal build routine, which is documented in uh, the tmux repo. We're going to go ahead and run autogen. We're going to do configure. Uh, and we tried it with enable static. It doesn't quite work. There's some library dependencies there that don't work. I might, might get that to work eventually, but it does make a seven megabyte executable when you do that versus 500K. And then you run make, and then that will compile the thing, get it all ready, and it will end up with a, a binary file called tmux inside of the tmux directory, which then I can then go use. So then it tells you where your stuff is. Uh, it makes a directory in my home directory in bin. If I don't have it already, that's what dash P says. It says create all the parent directories so I don't have them. And then we can go and we can say in the install script, just basically copy, but better. And it puts it from here into there. And the ls dash lh just lists out the file so we know it's there. And file will tell us what kind of file it is. That shows us that, uh, in fact, we could probably edit this. Let's do LDD as well. LDD will tell you all of the dependencies, if any that it has. And so if it's static, you'll see that it's not static. It does have dependencies on, on, on libraries with on the system. All right. So that, that's it. Now, the way I came to, to learning how to do this is that I actually used con the container and I executed into it, bash into it. So I could actually do all of the commands from the running container, but, but you don't need that if this is all you're doing, you can just do it from a little script, uh, or as uh, Grateful Tomato has said, you can do this from a Docker file, which would probably be the next step for me in my learning uh, to be able to write a really good Docker file that does the same thing. Uh, I do kind of like this as a script to tell you the truth, because I don't have to have a Docker file. Uh, I mean, here, uh, you know, in the same place, it, they, all my other install scripts are, are shell scripts. So it just kind of makes sense to do that. Uh, I'd have to have, you know, two files, a Docker file and something that runs the Docker file. So, so in this particular case, I'm plenty happy with just this. So uh, just a second. Uh, so then we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to run it. So we do install tmux and it's kind of fun to watch. It clones the tmux. Uh, there it is. It's downloading Conan, getting all of the stuff, uh, to run. Uh, to automatically delete the container. I forgot about that. I'll add that, Jarrett. There, JS Barrett. Thank you for that. 
So now it's pulling down all the stuff. Uh, and, and that's going to get rid of all that stuff. And it's going to do the build for you. This is why it's nobody gives, a, they don't care as much about cool things like Go's cross, cross compiling because it's so easy to make stuff now with containers from your, whatever system you have. I could have done this from Windows. I could have done it from a Mac. I could have done it probably from an ARM if I wanted to sit around and wait for it. Um, all right, so here we have the final result. It, it put the file into user local bin tmux. Uh, it's 5.2 meg, so it's an elf. It's dynamically linked. It has the following dependencies uh, on stuff that's this is dynamically linked, if you know what that's about. And now I, if I do which tmux, you see it here, and I can do tmux uh, dash v, and we have that, and it shows you, wow, that's different. So that's tmux next 3.3. I didn't see that before. That's because I built from the latest source. Let's see if it broke anything. So let's run, uh, let's go exit here. And uh, wait, I'm gonna put an RM on my Docker. Uh, let's see, load file. All right, so we wanna put, what do we wanna put here? Dash RM, a dash RM. Let's do a dash RM, how about that? Uh, we can actually watch the whole thing again. You want to try? It'll actually run faster now because uh, this time I should probably clean up my temp directory too. I uh, see how much. Oh, cannot stat tmux did go into it. I I think I ran it from the wrong location. What did I do? I'll, I'll come back to it. So let's go figure it out. Oh, is it dash dash rm? All right, thanks. Um, Let's try that. So this doesn't have to go get the image now because it has the image copied, but it has to, it does go ahead and rebuild it. And I should probably clean up my temp directory. I, I left my temp directory around and told me and told, you know, me myself where it was like, so go back and clean it up. Uh, because I didn't, you know, I wanted to be able to see if, if everything was right. Um, and all of this stuff could probably be logged as well. I think it actually is logged with a container, but in this case, I don't particularly need it. So it's almost done. All right, so we can go up here. And I'll show you, see, so there's the temp directory that it made that has tmux in there. And that's the volume that it shares. Uh, and so let's actually try it. My tmux in, that's just tmux with a environment variable set so I can run it inside of another tmux. And if it works, we can copy it enough and it, it's working fine. And if we do which tmux, you'll see the same thing again, the same one. And that's it. So, yeah, so Conan, Conan the container, Conan the container is there for your comp compiling needs, I guess. I don't even know what to say there. So, that's all for this video. I'm going to go talk to my wife who just got back from her art show. and uh, But give that a try. You can tweak on it. It's in my dot .files. Uh, here's my dot .files in case you don't know. Uh, it's under install in my dot .files. Have fun with that, and I'll be back in a while.